Yo, what up, what up? Peace, everybody. It's your boy Wax, Wax Roof TV, home of the Brokers Podcast. You know, um, like I said in the last video, we had took a little time off from recording, but back to it. Um, like I said, I'm going to try to get these videos out on a weekly basis. Um, super close to 1,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. It means a lot. Um, once we hit 1,000 subs, obviously we can get monetized. Big deal for us. Um, Brokers Podcast, you know, we need it. Uh, but after that, you know, we just want to keep going <clears throat> past that thousand and obviously just continue to do great things, bigger and better things. Um, so if you've already subscribed, thank you. Um, future subscribers, we love you. Um, so, yeah, I want to talk, jump into today's video. Uh, one take wax per usual. Get through it. So I'm going to kind of be all over the place. <clears throat> um, I want to talk about Alchemist. So. I was listening to one of his older projects, um, Step Brothers, with him and Ono. And uh, it's not him just strictly producing on there. He's actually rapping, which I think is dope. And I think a lot of people forget that Alchemist can rap. Um, actually came into the game as a rapper um, and then transitioned into a producer. So early on, he was signed to Tommy Boy as an artist with another individual. They were like a, a group, basically. Um, from there... You know, he was plugged in with um, Cypress Hill, DJ Muggs, and then he went on tour with them. So, you know, he was around, you know, obviously Muggs, Be Real. These guys was learning the game when it came to productions and picking samples, buying records. At one point, I know, well, I shouldn't say I know, but Alchemist talked about how, like, the situation with him rapping didn't work out in his favor. So what he ended up doing um, after that, you know, he just kind of was around Muggs. Basically learning the ropes with sampling. Muggs didn't really trust him to do like his drums and stuff, but he allowed him to pick, chop, and work on the samples and stuff, and that kind of just spawned his his love for production at that point. Um, you know, obviously Tommy Boy when he signed to Tommy Boy, going on tour with them and stuff. That's what linked. That's what linked him with Muggs. But Muggs actually plugged him in and made that connection to Mob Deep. Um, so on Mob Deep's album. Um, I'm forgetting the name of the album right now, and I shouldn't because I know yeah, everybody loves this. One of their better albums. Uh, but long story short, the single The Realist with Coogee Rap on there, Coogee Rap Body That Verse, probably one of the best top five verses in hip-hop of all time, in my opinion. Um, so he made that beat. He actually made the uh, Keep It Thorough beat on Prodigy's um, HNIC debut album. Um, and so, yeah, early on, you know, he made his connections with Mob D, but like the locks, um, basically he was kind of stamping himself in that early, in the early stages doing a lot of that. Uh, so we kind of fast forward 2007, uh, Return of the Mac, Prodigy and Alchemist put out their first solo project together. All the productions handled by Alchemist. Um, obviously Prodigy's doing all the rapping on it. It's pretty dope. Um, I enjoyed that project. I used to, I used to play that quite a bit, uh, Actually, I'm lying. I played it like a month ago. Not nah. so. It's still it's still on rotation. It's some classic material. Um, but yeah, so you know, he was one of the first producers that I listened to that really was honing in on just doing like the single artist, single producer type of stuff. Um, did it 2007 with Prodigy, and then Alchemist in another interview. I know he talks about crediting currency basically for the second wave in his career. Um, so with that, you know, basically his second wave, he really was doing more of the same stuff, um, you know, doing like single producer, single artist uh, stuff. That Covert Coop project kind of kicked it off. Um, Alchemist told the story. I don't I don't remember the interview with a source, but it's, it's on YouTube. You'll find it. Um, but <clears throat> he talked about how, you know, when him and Currency kind of first plugged in with one another, uh, Currency, he had, they had recorded two songs. Currency wanted to basically put it out like, midnight that night i was basically like nah let's like whoa let's not do that type shit so ended up recording like another freestyle put the freestyle out currency goes to sleep wake up next wakes up next day was like yo these records is dope let's just keep going so obviously that spawned the covert coop album um currency had a couple label situations that wasn't working out at the time so he was just like yo i'll pay you for this let's put it out for free that was for an alchemist at the time so they didn't, uh, so Alchemist basically agreed to put it out for free with, well, allowed Currency to put it out for free. Didn't take any money for Currency, but Currency was like, yo, I got the situation with Diamond Supply for some merch. We'll just do it all, all as Covert Coop merch. And they basically just, you know, did their thing from there. So, um, and he's done a lot of projects with a lot of artists, man. He's, 
I think that's one of the dopest things about Al is the fact that he he's worked with so many individuals, like newer artists, older artists. Like he's 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 very well versed in terms of who he has and hasn't worked with. Um, I know at one point. Well, this is another thing too. We got to kind of touch on. Um, one, he's the biggest tight beat search on YouTube outside of Joey Badass. So, like a lot of times, two of the biggest things people search: uh, Joey Badass tight beat and Alchemist tight beat. So, he's number two. Uh, Joey Badass is still number one, which is really, really, um, I guess, a testament in itself. To be honest with you. Um, so yeah, you know, heavy influenced by DJ Premier. Obviously, uh, he's going to be influenced by Muggs because, you know, Muggs brought him in, showed him the ropes, showed him how things go. So that's just what it is. I know at one point Alchemist talked about his production process um, and how he just got bored with it. So he said that initially he would he was kind of becoming robotic. So he would take a sample, chop up a sample, do everything he needed to do. Then he would go into how he's going to lay his drums and, you know, put everything else around that. And he said it just stopped being fun to him. Um, so needless to say, he switched up what he was doing. So like certain days he would go in, start laying drums, then bring in the sample or bring in the sample, then add something that's like vocals over it, then bring in drums. Like he just changes his thought process of how he was doing it and how he's going to approach it going forward just to keep it fresh. Um, he's worked with like some of my favorite artists and artists that I'm listening to now. So we got like Boldy James, um, Benny the Butcher, like I said, he's putting out a project with Larry June. He's done a project with Action Bronson, uh, Rock Marciano. Uh, he's worked with Earl Sweatshirts, Freddie Gibbs, Earl Sweatshirts, Earl Sweatshirt, Freddie Gibbs. Obviously, Currency, him and Currency got the, uh, the um, uh, what is the name of that project? The Fetty Joint, produced completely by uh, Alchemist. So, with him dropping this project with Larry June, I think it's dope. Because one, I said, I, like, Al's worked with a plethora of artists. And it's not just, like, guys who are solely stamped in the game already or already established or, you know, only working with vets or, like, just certain new guys, you know, based off the strength of someone else. Um, he really, like, if he likes your music or thinks you're dope or what you do, he's going to work with you. It was what I get from him. You know what I mean? Um, and he's worked with tons of other people so I'm not naming, but... I just think it's dope that he started his career basically late 90s, early 2000s when it comes to production, right? If we think about a lot of producers who were around in the late 90s, early 2000s, um, your Timberlands, your Heat Makers, um, even Just Blaze to some degree, like, there's a lot of guys who were around back then whose sound isn't relevant or being looked for today. Even RZA. RZA's one of my favorite producers, but... You're not checking for his stuff. Like you love what he did, you know, and what he does on the with, with, with on the movie scene, but you're not checking for like new RZA production these days. Alchemist has managed to keep himself relevant, and I think a lot of that is his evolution and, the, and his his style and the way he changed up things. Like if you listen to his production, you know, obviously from the earlier days, it sounds like like the early 2000s, nine and 90s. It sounds like production for that era not to say that it's bad he's still doing boom bap still doing heavy sampling but when you look at how he's doing it today he's still pushing that envelope while staying in his lane so is he still sampling yes is he still boom bapping yes you know does he do drumless beats now to some degree yes obviously he did a whole album at rock so you know you got to cater to rock when it comes to those drumless beats but in general he does like those drumless beats because that's in. That's the sound. Not to say necessarily that he's found a trend, but, you know, certain producers can hear and see certain things and see the way sounds are going or music is going, and it works for them. Um, I think, Like I said, evolution has been a big part of it. And then for him to still evolve, work with older grappers in the game, um, and then work with newer guys like your Benny the Butchers, your Rock Marcianos, um, your Action Bronsons, you know, your Griselda, pretty much your Griselda crew for the most part. This keeps him relevant, you know what I mean? And then when he does like these single projects, album producer, I'm sorry, album artist, album artist. See, one take wax. This is what happens when you one take everything. You just start stumbling over your words. Uh, producer artist <laughs> albums, right? I feel like his the sounds on it, all those albums individually are not the same. Like, yeah, you can tell Alchemist production sometime, but 
when you listen to one project, let's say, you know, for instance, this project he did with Boldy James, the production on that don't sound the same as the production on the project he did with Action Bronson. And the production on that doesn't sound the same as the production he did on the joint with Rock Marciano. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that keeps it fresh, too, when you're working with one artist, going from one artist to the next, and you're kind of tailoring your production to that artist, keeping them in their zone, keeping them comfortable, and just allowing them to kind of do what they do. I think that makes a huge makes a huge difference. And like I said, you know, you're gonna stand out and stay relevant in that regards because you're constantly pushing the needle in a different way while still staying in your lane, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, quick little video. Um, what's next for Alchemist at this point? He got a project with Larry June, got a project with Rock. Um, I mean, I'd love to see a project with like him and Nas, um, maybe Ghost, Ray. I think that would be pretty dope. Um, I don't know. Other cats i can't think of off the top but some of these older vets especially ones that have had issues with like production um i think it'd be great like even jada or like a sp you know a whole locks album would be fire a whole locks album produced by alchemist i think would be dope um but yeah i mean i guess what's next for al you know should he drop another album where he's rapping you know because he did say he really only raps with his friends but i think he's dope as a rapper and he should continue to rap so It'd be nice to see him put out a project rapping again. I think that'd be dope. But then I also want to see him push the envelope with some of these other producers. And I can't forget, this is another reason why um, he's kind of been relevant in the forefront for me lately, too. The joint that him and Hit Boy put out, put out recently where they're rapping over each other's beats, I thought he spazzed on that, too. Like, Al did his thing. Um, he not whack. So, you know, he's just making certain moves. Like, could that potentially be an album together? You know, Hit Boy and um, Alchemist. Even Hit Boy, I ain't know he rapped. He's not terrible. Not far from trash by by any stretch. So, I mean, that would be dope. You know what I mean? Two producers basically going back and forth over each other's beats for a whole album that can actually spit. That'd be fire. But what do you guys think? What's next for Alchemist? What should he do next? Where should he take it? Um, what does he have coming down the line? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, big fan. Like I said, I think he's one of the best producers in the game um happy for what he's doing hopefully we keep getting content from him uh, or music and whatever else he decides to do but yeah i want to see him work with a you know a whole slew of artists before before it's all said and done i feel like he's done a great job working with certain people now but if he just keeps continuing to add legends and even some of these newer uh top tier pen game rappers uh these new top tier pens um coming in the game you know even like how I just mentioned Stove God. Imagine him doing a whole project with Stove God. Um, or like a whole project with like a Rome Streets or a Sky Zoo. Um, I don't know, just to name a few. Um, maybe a, he did a, I was going to say Willie the Kid, but I think he did a whole album with Willie. I think that Masterpiece Theater was um, all Alchemist on the production. I have to go back and check. But yeah, man, I, you know, anybody who got some top some top tier pen game, you know, I think, and you know, someone like myself and people who watch his channels, you know, you tend to be scholars of rap, rap scholars, whatever you want to say, but uh, whatever you want to call yourself, a hip hop historian. Um, I think we'd appreciate seeing Alchemist basically keep just working with newer artists. Um, what other producers do you think are, are as relevant as Alchemist in terms of being able to constantly? push his sound to the next level and without bending or break his, bending or breaking his integrity or like uh, basically following a trend to some degree. Because obviously there's some producers who are going to follow the trend in terms of what's hot for a sound currently, but then there's your producers who stick to making what they like and only what they like. You know, they know it's not for everybody, but the people that it is for truly appreciate it. And I think that's where Alchemist falls. Like, you know, his production isn't necessarily for the world or it's not mainstream or like for TV or for mass consumption. But if you know, you know, if you listen to those artists or you're a huge fan of production, you probably like it. But that's my thoughts. I want to know what y'all think. It's your boy Wax, Wax Groove TV. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, peace.